CCY America presents Crosstalk, a nationwide call-in program discussing issues that have an effect on our families, our communities, our churches, our nation, and our world. Crosstalk, an opportunity for you to voice your concerns for biblical principles. And now live by satellite and around the world on the Internet at vcyamerica.org. Here is today's Crosstalk. Well, thank you for joining us on Crosstalk here on the VCY America Network. We're going to be listening to some stunning remarks that were made by President Obama uh, this week as it relates to a warning that he gave to the justices on the U.S. Supreme Court, a warning them of judicial activism if they overturn the Affordable Care Act, uh, Health Care Act, known as Obamacare. We'll get to that here in just a moment, and uh, you'll be able to hear some of the statements made this week as well as to give your comments on them during today's Crosstalk program. I'd like to make mention, though, of a couple of uh, other issues of uh, importance. Uh, WND is reporting uh, about uh, Iranian pastor Yusuf Nardakhani. Uh, we have, uh, of course, uh, given you uh, many uh, programs and thoughts pertaining to this pastor uh, in Iran, sentenced to die as uh, he's accused of converting away from Islam to, uh, uh, or outside the bonds of Islam, uh, to uh, uh, Christianity, leaving the Muslim faith, and he insists he has not. Nonetheless, he's condemned to die. And uh, his son has now received a birthday present, that is, a visit with his father in an Iranian jail. Uh, the visit also serves as a present for the pastor, whose birthday is next week. And uh, it also provides evidence that Yosef Nardakani is still alive. Uh, Jordan Seculo, the uh, executive director with the ACLJ, said this development is significant because it underscores what millions of people around the world understand that Iran's illegal imprisonment of Pastor Yosef and threatened execution is a violation of international law. He added that the the visit should put to rest the propaganda which may have originated with the Iranian government that the false reports about the execution of Pastor Yosef uh, had already occurred. He said this development should also send a powerful message to Iran. The world is watching. We continue to call on Iran to immediately and unconditionally release Pastor Yosef from prison so that he can once again join his family in freedom. Wanted to pass that story on to you as well as uh, uh, a, a stunning uh, video that uh, a video address that President Obama made uh, just days ago to Planned Parenthood. President Obama assured this billion-dollar abortion organization of his continued support and touted his record-breaking efforts to defund the group by pro-life professional politicians. The affirmation comes amidst an onslaught of bad publicity for the abortion giant. In recent months, the group is now under federal investigation after reports alleged that it has engaged in systematic Medicaid fraud, abused other federal funds, and routinely evaded state abortion laws. Let's listen in to the clip that President Obama recorded for Planned Parenthood. For you and for most Americans, protecting women's health is a mission that stands above politics. And yet over the past year, you've had to stand up to politicians who want to deny millions of women the care they rely on and inject themselves into decisions that are best made between a woman and her doctor. Let's be clear here. Women are not an interest group. They're mothers and daughters and sisters and wives. They're half of this country, and they're perfectly capable of making their own choices about their health. So we're grateful that through it all, you never forgot who you're fighting for. The woman with a new lease on life because a mammogram caught her cancer in time. The woman who can sleep easier at night because of a cervical cancer screening. The woman who was able to choose when to start a family because she could afford contraception. So when some professional politicians casually say that they'll get rid of Planned Parenthood, don't forget what they're really talking about. Eliminating the funding for preventive care that millions of women rely on and leaving them to fend for themselves. That's why last year, when Republicans in Congress threatened to shut down the government unless we stopped funding Planned Parenthood, I had a simple answer. No. But we know this debate is far from over. We must continue to send a message loud and clear. If you truly value families, you shouldn't play politics with a woman's health. That's why I know that Planned Parenthood will continue providing care no matter what. 
I know you'll never stop fighting to protect the health care and the choices that America's women deserve. And as long as I have the privilege of being your president, neither will I. Thanks. Well, there we have it, the clip of President Obama pledging to never stop fighting for Planned Parenthood. Uh, By the way, uh, he said in that message, if you truly value families, you shouldn't play politics with a woman's health. That's why I know that Planned Parenthood will continue providing care no matter what. Uh, If you truly value families, use those words. And yet we know with abortion that it is, uh, it's fatal. I mean, we are killing family when we commit abortion. Abortion is the taking of innocent human life. The president praised Planned Parenthood, said he was grateful because through it all, you never forgot who you're fighting for. It's not the baby, folks. It's not the baby. Uh, also, he said that, uh, that so when professional politicians casually say they'll get rid of Planned Parenthood, don't forget what they're really talking about, eliminating the funding for preventative care that millions of women rely on and leaving them to fend for themselves. Folks, Planned Parenthood does not... Uh, provide mammograms, as he has also stated in the statement. The woman with a new lease on life because a mammogram caught her cancer in time. Planned Parenthood does not provide that, and funding would not stop for uh, entities that provide this, just against those entities that specialize in, uh, specialize in baby killing. You say that's strong? Well, last year, well, uh, let's see, uh, Planned Parenthood, this is 2010, according to their annual report, this business got $487.4 million of your money. Tax dollars, $487.4 million. That's nearly half a billion dollars, according to its latest annual report. And how many abortions in 2010? 329,455 baby killings. How can... God bless America. Well, to our greater point for today's program about the warning that the president gave to the U.S. Supreme Court, it was a joint press conference. With him were the Mexican and Canadian leaders. President Obama said if the U.S. Supreme Court strikes down federal health care law, commonly known as Obamacare, that he would consider it, consider it to be judicial activism. He said, I'm confident the Supreme Court will take what we would be an unprecedented, extraordinary step of overturning a law that was passed by a strong majority of a democratically elected Congress. He said, I just remind conservative commentators that for years we've heard the biggest problem on the bench was judicial activism or a lack of judicial restraint that an unelected group of people would somehow overturn a duly constituted and passed law. He said, I'm confident that this is going to be upheld because it should be upheld. He warned a ruling against it would be an unprecedented unprecedented act of judicial activism. He uh, weighed in for the first time Monday this week about uh, the court and warned the court against a lack of judicial restraint in which an unelected group of people would somehow overturn a duly constituted and passed law. Let's listen to what he had to say. This is President Obama at the Rose Garden press conference uh, dealing with this issue here of the Supreme Court. And I think you'll find that uh, some of his remarks were rather extraordinary in what he wanted to say. We're going to get that clip here for you here momentarily. See, we're having some problems getting it queued up. And uh, we'll come back to that clip here momentarily. It is uh, extraordinary, though, to see what the president had to say pertaining to this issue and the fact that uh, he was, uh, in essence, giving this warning a shot across the bow to the court in the things that he had to uh, say for the court in that regard. So we'll try and bring that back here in just a bit. Nonetheless, he implied that uh, the ruling would be unprecedented, could be seen as judicial activism, and also uh, saying some legal uh, some legal watchers, Pan Solicitor General Donald Varelli's presentation at the oral arguments, uh, even CNN's Jeffrey Tubin described the Obama legal case as a train wreck, 
and uh, also stated that uh, the Supreme Court is expected to rule on this health care law, of course, in June. So uh, very interesting comments that came forth in the Rose Garden as he, uh, the president uh, made uh, to bear his thoughts, giving this warning message to the court. He uh, also implied that uh, ruling the law unconstitutional would be unprecedented. And uh, 40 years let's ago, see, we, that's not quite it there. I'll pull that down. Uh, the president signed the Affordable Care Act into law, and he talked about this, this huge vote. Well, he signed it March 23rd, 2010. It had passed in the Senate on party lines 60 to 39. Not one Republican senator voted for it. It had passed in the House along party lines 219 to 212, 178 uh, Republicans and 34 Democrats voted against it. So not that huge a vote, was it? Let's go now to that clip and hear from the president. I'm actually uh, continue to be confident that the Supreme Court will uphold the law. Uh, and the reason is because uh, in accordance with uh, precedent out there, it's constitutional. That's not just my opinion, by the way. That's the opinion of uh, legal experts across the ideological spectrum. Uh, including two very conservative appellate court justices uh, that said this wasn't even a close case. Uh, I think it's important, because I, I watched some of the commentary last week, to remind people uh, that, that this is not an abstract argument. People's lives are affected by the lack of availability of health care, uh, the inaffordability of health care, uh, their inability to get health care because of pre-existing conditions. The law that's already in place has already given 2.5 million young people health care that wouldn't otherwise have it. There are tens of thousands of adults with pre-existing conditions who have health care right now because of this law. Uh, parents don't have to worry about their children not being able to get health care because they can't be prevented from getting health care as a consequence of a pre-existing condition. That's part of this law. Millions of seniors are paying less for prescription drugs because of this law. Americans all across the country have greater rights and protections uh, with respect to their insurance companies and are getting preventive care because of this law. So that's just the part that's already been implemented. That doesn't even speak to the 30 million people who stand to gain coverage uh, once it's fully implemented in 2014. Uh, and I think it's important, I think the American people understand, and uh, I think the justices should understand that in the absence of uh, an individual mandate, you cannot have uh, a uh, mechanism to ensure that people with pre-existing conditions can actually get health care. Um, so, so there's there's not only a economic element to this and a legal element to this, but there's a human element to this. Uh We're going to pause right there, and we'll pick up with the comments after the break. Uh, President Obama warning the Supreme Court as it relates to upholding the health care reform law. We're going to take a quick break. You're listening to Crosstalk on VCY America. to Genesis with Dr. John Morris, scientist and geologist at the Institute for Creation Research. Dr. Morris, we've seen reports back from the explorations. Is life ever going to be found on Mars? Chris, it's really frustrating to read the reports. Scientists are saying that they expect to find water on Mars, and if so, that would be sufficient to say that life has been there. But nothing could be further from the truth. Just because every living thing needs water to survive doesn't mean that water is sufficient to create life. It may be that water is on Mars, may be frozen, may be underground, but just because there's water doesn't mean there's life. Life is found in almost every environment on Earth from extremely hot zones to frigid Antarctica, but it's there because God created life on planet Earth and here it thrives. Only God can create life, and He did so on Earth, not Mars, back in Genesis. Thanks, Dr. Morris. For more information, visit us on the web at icr.org. I'm Chris O'Brien. 
Thanks for tuning in. The president spoke out for the first time Monday, saying that uh, a ruling against uh, Obamacare here by the Supreme Court would be an unprecedented act of judicial activism. He was speaking in the Rose Garden. He was at a press conference with the Mexican President uh, Felipe Calderon and Canadian Prime Minister Stephen Harper. And as he weighed in for the first time on this uh, hearing before the United States Supreme Court and a warning against judicial restraint. Let's uh, go back to those comments comments as they took place. And I hope that's not forgotten uh, in this political debate. Uh, Ultimately, I'm confident that the Supreme Court uh, will not take what would be an unprecedented, extraordinary step of overturning uh, a law that was passed by uh, a strong majority of uh, a democratically elected Congress. And I I just remind conservative commentators that for years what we've heard is the biggest problem on the bench was judicial activism or a lack of judicial restraint, that uh, an unelected uh, group of of people would somehow overturn uh, uh, a duly constituted and and passed uh, law. Uh, Well, there's a, a good example. Uh, and I'm pretty confident that this uh, this court will recognize that uh, and not take that step. Do you ever recall a president speaking out on, on a decision here before the U.S. Supreme Court uh, rendered their decision? I mean, we saw here just a couple of years ago when he gave his State of the Union speech, and we saw him uh, chastise the Supreme Court regarding a ruling they made on a free speech-related effort. And uh, we saw, was it Justice Alito who shook his head during the president's message and mouthed the words, not true? Uh, Well, the president uh, talked about the uh, strong majority of a democratically elected Congress. And again, let's review the vote. 60 to 39 party lines in the Senate. Uh, In the House, it was 219 to 212. Would you call that a strong majority? 178 Republicans, 34 Democrats voting against it. And then we also saw take place uh, the... um, uh, newly elected Senator Brown out of Massachusetts, whom uh, represented the 40th vote to block Obamacare from taking place. And instead, the Senate just deemed to have accepted the House version, never went back to a vote, but just deemed it as having been passed. What about this overreaching power by the U.S. Supreme Court? Well, let's take a look at what the Constitution says. In Article 3, Section 1, it says the judicial power of the United States shall be vested in one Supreme Court and in such inferior courts as a Congress may from time to time ordain and establish. And then looking at uh, portions here of Section 2, the judicial power shall extend to all cases in law and equity arising under this Constitution, the laws of the United States and treaties made to controversies to which the United States shall be a party, to controversies between two or more states, between a state and citizens of another state, between citizens of different states, between citizens of the same state, claiming lands under or uh, under grants of different states, and between a state and the citizens thereof and foreign states, citizens, or subjects. Yeah, we've got a, a multiplicity of states that have brought action against uh, the Obamacare uh, ruling as uh, uh, was uh, g- that came forth from, from Congress. Well, in response to the president's remarks on Monday, a a, a federal appeals court yesterday, this is foxnews.com, striking back after President Obama cautioned the Supreme Court against overturning the health care overhaul and warned that such an act would be unprecedented. A three-judge panel for the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals yesterday ordered the Justice Department to explain by Thursday whether the administration believes judges have the power to strike down a federal law. One justice in particular chided the administration for what he said was uh, being perceived as a challenge to judicial authority, referring directly to Obama's latest comments about the Supreme Court's review of the health care case. Does the Department of Justice recognize 
that federal courts have the same authority in appropriate circumstances to strike federal statutes because of one or more constitutional infirmities, Judge Jerry Smith asked at the hearing. Smith also made clear during that exchange that he was referring to statements by the president in the past few days to the effect that it is somehow inappropriate for what he termed unelected judges to strike acts of Congress. That has troubled a number of people who have read it as somehow a challenge to the federal courts or to their authority, Smith said, and that's not a small matter. Smith ordered a response from the Department of Justice within 48 hours, instructed the Justice Department to provide an explanation of more, no less than three pages, single space by noon on Thursday. Well, the President's uh, press secretary, Carney, said that Obama was expressing the point on the national economic challenges that there should be due deference paid as a matter of precedent to our uh, democratically elected officials. Well, today Fox News goes on to report that Attorney General Eric Holder has acknowledged this morning that the courts have final say and said that the department, the, his department would respond formally to an appeals court order and explain whether the Obama administration believes judges in fact have the power to overturn federal laws. The Attorney General at a brief press conference in Chicago made clear the administration thinks they do. He said, quote, we respect the decisions made by the courts since Marbury versus Madison, referring to the landmark 1803 case that established the president of judicial review. Courts have final say, end of quote. Holder said uh, this morning that we are formulating a response now and said the department statement would be appropriate. Also uh, described the president's comments as appropriate, saying that while the courts have final say, they are also fairly deferential when it comes to overturning the statutes that the duly elected representatives of the people, that's Congress, has passed. He said the department is confident health care reform will stand uh, constitutional muster. Well, very interesting things that are going on here because uh, now we have a governor from South Carolina, Nikki Haley, saying that uh, that the president is being a bully, saying that the man who took office on a promise of hope and change is now bullying people to get his way. He said, uh, 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 she said this on Fox and Friends. Quote, he's bullying his way on, Rep- on Paul Ryan, saying he's not coming up with an adequate budget. Now he's bullying the Supreme Court, saying, no, they won't reverse the health care law. They won't go against this. Let's hear it. One of the things that you decided to focus on right when you became governor this was is from the Fox and Friends. situation. What do you make of the whole Supreme Court now taking this up? I know that you were instrumental in talking to the president and wanting him to rush this along, right? Absolutely. We asked him to speed the um, track that it was on. What is amazing is what a bully President Obama has suddenly become. Here was a man that came in with hope and change, and now he's bullying his way. He's bullying his way on Paul Ryan, saying that he's not coming up with an adequate budget. Now he's bullying the Supreme Court, saying, no, they won't, they won't reverse this. They won't go against us on this. That's not how things work. He has to lead. He's shown no sort of leadership when it comes to balancing a budget. He's shown no leadership when it comes to allowing the states to do the will of the people. He continues to say no to everything. Well, there we have a governor now talking about the president bullying. We keep hearing from the president. We need to have civility in our comments. Civility. And we need to get along with one another. Do away with all the the rhetoric and exchange back and forth. Well, speaking to the American Society of Newspaper Editors in a luncheon in Washington, D.C. yesterday, this from CNSNews.com, President Obama accused the Republican-controlled House of Representatives of attempting to impose a radical vision on our country through the budget proposal that passed last week. Keep in mind, his budget went before Congress. Not one congressman voted for it. Not one vote, not one Democrat voted for the president's budget. Everyone rejected it. This congressional Republican budget is something different altogether, Obama told the newspaper editors. It's a Trojan horse disguised as a deficit reduction plan. It is really an attempt to impose a radical vision on our country. Let's listen into what he had to say here. This congressional Republican budget is something different altogether. It is a Trojan horse. Disguised as deficit reduction plans, it is really an attempt to impose a radical vision on our country. It is thinly veiled social Darwinism. It is antithetical to our entire history as a land of opportunity and upward mobility for everybody who's willing to work for it. 
a place where prosperity doesn't trickle down from the top but grows outward from the heart of the middle class. And by gutting the very things we need to grow an economy that's built to last, education and training, research and development, our infrastructure, it is a prescription for decline. There we have uh, President Obama speaking in regard to the GOP passed budget, an attempt to impose a radical vision on our country. Well, the budget that was passed last Thursday, there are many conservatives who have said, hey, this thing has not gone far enough. Uh, according to Congressional Quarterly today, it would spend $5 trillion less than over the next 10 years that President Obama proposed and flattens income taxes to two rates, 10% and 25%. Uh, by the way, since uh, Obama was inaugurated, January 20th, 2009, federal deficit has grown by roughly $5 trillion, more than it grew under all presidents from George Washington through George H.W. Bush. Interesting. We'd like to open the phone lines today to get your reaction to these clips, your reaction to uh, the president's warning to the U.S. Supreme Court. Does it sound, some have said this sounds like a dictator. This sounds dictatorial. Do you agree with that assessment? Do you disagree? What is your response to the president speaking out uh, to the court even before rendering such a decision? Our phone number to Crosstalk is 800-733-9829. 1-800-733-9829. This so angered uh, a number of justices that they have ordered the U.S. Attorney General to submit a writing to the court by tomorrow at 12 noon, no less than three pages long, single-spaced, to respond to this issue of whether the president believes the court has the authority to strike down laws it believes is unconstitutional. Folks, um, this is very interesting to see what's going on here. Also, uh, another development here that's going on and that is the press a buzz about if the president's on the verge of giving an endorsement to homosexual marriage. Interviews with gay rights advocates and people cho- close to the president's campaign suggest it is no longer a matter of if, but when he publicly voices his support. His backers are split over whether that will happen before the November elections or whether it be after the November elections. He was once an opponent of gay marriage. He declared in 2010, though, that his personal views on the subject were evolving. What is all going to come out after the November elections? What will happen? What will transpire? Some have said that if the president is this bold at this juncture, knowing he's facing re-election, what will be the scene in America after a second term begins? Oh, I guess he will have more flexibility with Russia and arms control. He will then be able to get back into this uh, discussion on the formalizing of a Palestinian state, which he said is off until after the election, and now wondering whether or not he will come up before or after November election as to where he stands on homosexual marriage. Well, let's take your thoughts on these issues here today and the warning to the U.S. Supreme Court. Our number to Crosstalk, 800-733-9829. Stay with us. We'll be back in 60 seconds. Most people devote much time researching and investigating important issues before making a decision or reaching a conclusion. Yet when faced with the most important issue of their earthly life, where will I spend eternity, they appear to be unconcerned or disinterested. Since God does not promise anyone tomorrow, and man's eternal destiny is sealed at death, would it not be wise to investigate these things? That's the purpose of the book, Preparing for Eternity, in which author Mike Gendron contrasts the truth of God's Word with the teachings and traditions he was taught for over 30 years in the Roman Catholic Church. He found that eternal life is not merited by good works, but is given freely by God's grace to those who put their faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ as their all-sufficient Savior. 
The book, Preparing for Eternity, is available for a donation of $17 or more to VCY America by calling 1-800-729-9829. That's 1-800-729-9829. You're listening to Crosstalk here on VCY America. Has the president gone too far? Do you consider this a warning to the Supreme Court? I mean, even ABC News pointed out the starkness of the warning that he provided. Let's get your thoughts here today from across the nation at 800-733-9829. We're going to begin in Oregon. And Wilbur, go ahead. You're on the air. Well, thank you for taking my call. I'm a little concerned because I think if I were to try to tamper with judges' decisions... I would be in trouble. And I just question a man trying to call right and wrong for the judges when he himself, in the Georgia uh, uh, case against him, that he doesn't even have the right to be president. And so uh, I'm just so sorry. I think America has seen enough of where this man is going And he needs to be gone because he's not even eligible to be president. And then to try to tamper with the judges, I thought, was illegal. That's my comment. Thank you. Thanks for sharing your thoughts, Wilbur. Next to uh, Chad in Madison, Wisconsin, you're on the air. Oh, thank you for taking my call. Um, Sir, this is, Barack is, I don't know, a lot of people know I hear this, but I think he's he's really something else and, and going to be revealed in, in time to come, and if we even get Mitt Romney, I think he would be the same person. Uh, I, would, I would just like to say that this is all planned out by God, and, and, and this station, and a lot, you're so informative, and, and actually in God's Word, and I I, I sometimes feel that you, you spend so much time um, just uh, trying to, um, I guess, uh, reveal what is happening according to God's Word, and perhaps maybe the station will be better served um, actually speaking more about Jesus and His um, loving kindness and all that. And there's nothing wrong with exposing evil, but sometimes I think, yeah, okay, thank you. Well, Chad, I appreciate your comments, but keep in mind that we spend hours upon hours upon hours of every day of Bible teaching messages that are going forth from this network. Uh, crosstalk certainly as as uh, also our responsibility of being salt and light. Uh, just as the watchmen on the wall, as we see in the book of Ezekiel, shouted the warning when they saw the enemy approaching and when we saw evil taking place. And uh, certainly in that regard, we as well, oh, we lost him, uh, in that regard as well, seek to be that watchman on the wall to keep you informed. The prophet Hosea wrote, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Uh, we are told to be understanding of the times. Certainly we need to do that. It does not negate our responsibility for evangelism. It does not negate the responsibility to be talking about the, uh, Jesus Christ and the plan of salvation that we have through his death, burial, and resurrection. Uh, but we have an, another responsibility as well. And so as as you listen to the message that these stations that provide crosstalk, you'll hear Bible teaching messages coming each and every day by the hours. And uh, the, this program takes a, a break from that to keep you uh, a, 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 abreast of additional matters and responsibilities that we have in the Christian life as well. Uh, let's go to John in West Milwaukee. You're on the air, John. Yes, afternoon. Uh, everything I heard from Obama's mouth was ghastly. I think I know what Obama's health care is. He's really going to take care of me by either putting me in, in Guantanamo Bay or Abu Ghraib or the grave. I mean, uh, there, there's no doubt about it that uh, he has he he intends the worst for our nation and uh, the people in it. It it it's just unbelievable what's coming out of him. He can no way, shape, or form be called a Christian, and that's a, 
that's what I got to say. Okay, thank you for your call. By the way, uh, the president just gave his Easter message, and and you're going to find many elements. You can say, wow, that that is wonderful. He's talking about the crucifixion of Christ, and he's talking about the resurrection of Christ. Uh, one uh, group is pointing out, and I have a copy of the transcript of the president's Easter message, and he talks about um, uh, it's an opportunity for us to reflect on the triumph of the resurrection and to give thanks for an all-important gift of grace. And for me, and I'm sure for some of you, it's also a chance to remember the tremendous sacrifice that led up to that day and all that Christ endured, not just as a son of God, but as a human being. Uh, referring to Jesus Christ as a Son of God rather than the Son of God. Interesting. Uh, and I say that because uh, every word is carefully weighed and measured that the president is going to be speaking. To Toledo, Ohio, Jim, go ahead. You're on the air. Yeah, hey, I'm a Christian, and, and I believe in Christ. I accepted Christ in my heart uh, a long time ago when I was a young, young lad in a uh, Lutheran in a Lutheran school. Okay, let's come and in on these issues here, Jim. Every day. And we were taught right from wrong, and we were taught, taught to have Christ in our heart. And, and Mr. Obama has saved my job. Besides that, the man is a Christian. Jim, can we deal with the issue we're talking about here today, your reaction to his speaking uh, pertaining to the warning to the United States Supreme Court? Stop dissing the man that's really trying to perpetuate. Hello, Jim. Our people. Hello, Jim. Okay, Jim, we need to have dialogue here. We we need you to deal with the issue. Washington State, Barbara, go ahead. You're on the air. Uh, Yes, um, I'm very fearful for this country if he is reelected. But uh, every time I hear you guys talking about him, it brings to mind First Kings chapter ten, verse eight, talking about Rehoboam. I hope that's the way to say it. The son of Solomon. Uh, after Solomon died, uh, uh, says Rehoboam, he forsook the counsel of the old men which they had given him and consulted with the young men that were grown up with him and which stood before him. And because of that, he uh, uh, listens not to the people. And that's what this reminds me of, is uh, someone who doesn't have enough sense to listen to the people and is going to go his own way and has a tizzy fit every time he doesn't get his own way. Thank you for your thoughts here today, Barbara. All right. Mm-hmm. Our number, 800-733-9829. Bridgman, Michigan. Gaylord, you're on the air. Uh, good afternoon. I, I just, I'm not really surprised by Mr. Obama's comments. If you look to see what had happened uh, prior to the, the, the last few years in Congress when the liberals in control and they could not... Uh, get a budget together, and the way they passed his uh, health care program. So the liberal agenda is such that uh, I, I truly believe he's just acting out the way uh, he wants to, and he thinks he's right, and he really doesn't care what the rest of us think. Mm. Thanks for sharing your thoughts from the road here today. Our number, 800-733-9829. To West Dallas, Wisconsin, Brad, you're on the air. Hi, Jim. Um, with regard to the gay marriage thing and the LGBT thing, he's already shown his hand on that in his first term. He's on their side, and he's just going to be more on their side if he gets a second term. Mm-hmm. And with regard to uh, the courts not being able, able to overturn laws, well, uh, I never heard him lament Roe v. Wade overturning 50 anti-abortion laws, one for each state, and recently... A uh, federal court uh, struck down parts of Act 10 here in Wisconsin, and I didn't hear a peep out of Obama on that one. Yeah. And you know he's paying attention to Wisconsin. So his uh, position here is highly hypocritical, and like the lady said, he's, ha- he's having a hissy fit. Thanks for your thoughts today, Brad. Thank you. 800-733-9829. Doug in Ringgold, Georgia, you're on the air. Yes, it just might be a way for God to get rid of Obama. Who knows? Uh, you mean as far as the election is concerned? Yes. Okay. Okay, and, and what's your response though, to what he had to say, the warning to the Supreme Court? Uh, I think he's just plain arrogant and mad myself. Hmm. But but like a guy said right before me, it depends on whether his ox is getting gored or not. Well, well he's, he's for... Well, look at all these judges that legislate from the bench all across America. And they, they don't have a right to do that, but they're doing it. Thanks for your thoughts here today. Let's go next to uh, John in Republic, Michigan. You're on the air. Yes, uh, uh, 
my feeling is on this is that uh, this is exactly what he believes. Uh, you heard him speak to the press, uh, which is largely for him. And uh, it, it's very amazing how he comes across so smoothly and tells you exactly the wrong thing in such a, a self-righteous way to try to get you to commit and to believe in his program. He's consistently trying to divide and conquer and divide and conquer. It's, it's the most godless thing, uh, but that's how he's empowered is through God, godlessness, hmm. not through righteousness. That's my thought on it. Thank you, John. 800-733-9829 to Lat and Racine. You're on the air. Yeah, people got to realize that if they believe Obama is a Christian, the reason he's pressuring the Supreme Court is because they're following the Constitution. He wants to twist the Constitution. And people should look back when Obama went to college. I, I, I researched him. He studied Leninism and Marxism, and he wants to try to mer- make America like a communist country. So anybody believes that his view has changed from when he went to college, they better open up their eyes and realize that he's the farthest from a Christian. Anybody that start, studies Marxism in this country and wants the United States to follow what the Russians did. Okay, thank you for sharing your opinions here today as well. Uh, to Felicity in Boise, Idaho, you're on the air. Afternoon. I have a question, really. Um, listening, I was scanning channels and I came across her station, and of course it's intriguing to hear people's opinions, but I noticed something pretty consistent with the last time I tuned in, is that when callers don't agree with your agenda, you kind of cut them off and tell them to get back on task or on, on topic. But yet, when someone, you know, has a lot of negative things to say about the president, they get to express themselves to the end. I'm just curious, why that double standard? Well, it's not a double standard. Uh, part of the aspect here, Felicity, is to have dialogue with one another. And mm-hmm. when when uh, we had the, the other uh, individual calling and, and would not even respond to questions, kept rattling along, uh, that is not dialogue that takes place in that regard. And so uh, because they have so uh, wielded a follow of what the agenda of of the topic is for the day, uh, certainly it, it behooves us to have to move on to those who will address the issue. So, so clarify the topic for the day, because what I've heard in the last five minutes of listening is people calling in making several different points about different factors of this president's term and different um, yeah, about opinions Felicity, about his Christianity. So what is the topic for today? I, I, I'm so sorry you haven't heard the whole program here today, but our topic here today is dealing with the comments that the president made before the uh, in the Rose Garden with the president of Canada and Mexico as it relates to his warning to the U.S. Supreme Court. And uh, the program here today will be archived on the site, so that'll give you the benefit of going back and listening to it as well. Thank Thanks so much. Uh, Tom in Fort Scott, Kansas, you're on the air. Yes, uh, <clears throat> just to help the lady out, the issue is Obama was trying to, is basically th- threatening the high courts if they, if they don't stand behind his agenda on, on health care. And that's all I have to say. Okay, thank you, thank Tom. You. Uh, 800-733-9829. Olive, you're next in Florida. Yes. Yeah. Go ahead, Olive. Hello? You're on the air, Olive. Yes. I want to know why they talk to the president, the way they talk about him, and they put him down. America is not going to be destroyed from an outer foe. It's going to be destroyed from people in this country. And, Olive, what are your what comments pertaining to his remarks about his warning to the Supreme Court? Well, it, it starts from a long time ago, ever since this man stepped in the White House. Nobody liked him. Everybody just talked bad up, and he's not the worst person I've ever been okay, in the world. Okay, Olive, can you respond to the comments he made regarding his warning to the Supreme Court? I didn't, I didn't hear it, but I oh, was Okay, listening. okay, you answered it right there. You need to listen, please. We're going to be back in just one minute. You're listening to Crosstalk on VCY America. We'll be right back. For the Worldview Weekend Minute, I'm Brandon House. Our website's worldviewweekend.com. I did a series of radio shows on 20 characteristics of false teachers embraced by the false church. I'd like to share those with you through the next several commentaries. Number one, false teachers are insincere and use God's word for personal gain. We get that from 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 17. For we are not as so many peddling the word of God, but as of sincerity, but as from God. We speak in the sight of God in Christ. 
False teachers use the Word of God often distorted, out of context, twisted, for their own personal gain, largely also financial personal gain. Two, false teachers have a form of godliness but deny God. Second Timothy 3, 5 says, having a form of godliness but denying his power. And from such people turn away. False teachers will look like Christians, sound like Christians, talk like Christians, but they deny the essential Christian doctrines and we're warned to turn away from them. For more information, our website is worldviewweekend.com. Listening to Crosstalk here on VCY America, taking your phone calls today from across the nation on these statements made this week in the Rose Garden and uh, pursuing afterwards. We have the judges uh, that are demanding now from the Justice Department uh, for the uh, Obama administration to uh, write a minimum of three pages, single spaced, as to whether or not the courts have authority uh, to determine whether laws are constitutional or not. Uh, the president giving his warning this week to the Supreme Court. This is out. Outraged uh, uh, justices from across the nation and uh, the uh, U.S. Attorney General responding uh, by noontime tomorrow, getting your reaction to these issues here today on Crosstalk. Going next to West Salem, Wisconsin, Garnett, you're on the air. I just felt in response to his, his recent remarks there and some earlier as well that it would be uh, quite appropriate for someone in Congress to face the president and tell him, Mr. President, you are not elected to be a dictator, because that's the position he's struggling for. So you believe that was a dictatorial comment? It sure was. Hmm. Thanks for your thoughts here today. Uh, Erie, Pennsylvania, Steve, you're on the air. Hi, thank you. Uh, my comment, I wanted to call him, first of all, thank you for this program, because the sound bites that I was able to listen to today about the president talking He's a very eloquent speaker, and for those of us who don't have the opportunity to listen to things all the time that he speaks about, it's very confusing to the uh, for, for us who are, can't constantly follow current events. And I just wanted to thank you and praise the Lord for your ministry and for um, allowing us to, um, to understand by yourself putting this on the air. Mm-hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you, Steve. And what's your reaction to what you heard? Well, I, I feel the same as some other ones. I feel that he is uh, he he hides behind his words. He speaks very boldly and uh, out of frustration of not getting his way. Uh, I don't agree at all with the way he's pushing around the Supreme Court. Uh, I think it's very wrong. I didn't think our country was, was built on the fact that the president would go this route, but it seems to be that case with President Obama. Mm. Thank you for your comments here today, Steve. And uh, folks, again, I underscore, even in light of the comments and things that are taking place, Scripture exhorts us to pray for those who are in authority over us. We need to be praying for our president, be praying for our congressional leaders, be praying for our senators, be praying for our governors. Uh, Jim, in Plymouth, you're on the air. Um, Yes, my question is, um, does the president have authority over the Supreme Court uh, after they make decisions? Can he... uh uh, knock down their decisions or not? No. No. I mean, and, and there are times in which a, uh, a president may seek to utilize things like the executive order uh, in so doing, uh, but certainly the, the Supreme Court will strike down laws as being constitutional or not constitutional. Um, but uh, no, he would not be able to. It would have to go back through the uh, legislative means again. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for your call. Uh, to Ty in Wisconsin. You're on the air. Hi. Thanks so much. Um, as far as his comments, this, uh, as another caller said, reminds me of someone who's a dictatorial, um, the Marxist. He wants to get his way, and it's his way or, or no way. And he also commented about, uh, I don't know if you've heard about Sheriff Joe. It's now come out that the Clinton's daughter was threatened. Her life was threatened if he was, you know, brought out about his birth certificate. But the thing I'd really like to say is that I, I feel both good and bad about what's happening. The, I feel bad for my son who's coming up and has got to live through what we're facing. I feel good in the sense that I, through all this, you can see how the end times is going to come about, how it's going to take the, 
the destruction of America and Christian values and the, the Christian country and the Constitution and everything that was founded on to bring about the one world order and, and global that, uh, uh, economy and everything that uh, Brandon House talks about on his show. Sure. So I find it both good and bad, if you, if you know what I'm trying to say. Thank you for your comments, Ty. Dave in Loyal, Wisconsin, you're on the air. Hello, this is Dave. Um, what I wa- wanted to ask about is, didn't he, we just go through this where he actually um, took and bypassed Congress and with executive orders and with appointing people? Now he's upsurting the judicial branch. Um, what else can we expect from him except being a monarchy? Dave, I don't know of anybody who has an answer to that question as to what more can we expect, because we have seen things occur through this presidency we have never seen before. Thanks for the comment. Let's go to Indiana. Go ahead, caller. You're on the air. Hello? Go ahead. Yes. I think uh, Obama has cooked his goose in that that he threatened uh, the Supreme Court in the Rose Garden, and then the Supreme Court is demanding this three-page report. Yeah, it's not the Supreme Court that's demanding the report. It is a lower court that's demanding it that, that was in the midst of hearing another case uh, right now on, on similar issues. But oh. uh, I, I find it still very interesting uh, that uh, the court has made this demand, I mean, a very urgent demand of the Justice Department as they issued this yesterday, and in essence just giving this court until noontime tomorrow to respond. You're right. Well, I, I think he's going to get himself in trouble now. Okay, thank you for your thoughts here today on Crosstalk. Folks, these are very much the items that are, are before us here, and um, uh, we bring them to your attention because this is indeed current events. That we need to be understanding of the times. We need to uh, know the circumstances that are taking place uh, around us here across this nation, the the matters, the values. Uh, is the Constitution at stake uh, is a question that you have to answer in your own mind as this uh, demand went forth uh, from the White House warning uh, the court against judicial activism. How would they be an activist court if they strike down? his Affordable Health Care Act. Uh, he talked about a strong majority of a democratically elected Congress that had passed this. Strong majority? 219 to 212 in the House. The Senate, 60 to 39. And uh, then the Senate deeming this to have passed? Friends, we appreciate you tuning in to Crosstalk and staying abreast of the important issues that are around us. But as we come to matters here in this year of 2012, it reminds us again the importance of be praying for our nation, to be praying for our, our nation's leaders, and also to be sure that we are being salt and that we are being light to the world around us. Thanks for joining us today on Crosstalk. Listening to Crosstalk via satellite and the internet from BCY America. Views expressed may or may not be those of this station. For a CD of today's program, send a donation of $6 or more to VCY Tape Ministry, 3434 West Kilbourne Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 53208. Or download by RSS or podcast from CrosstalkAmerica.com. And join us again for Crosstalk. Crosstalk.